Hello, my name is David Bolding, and here is the second part of our two-part film on fetal alcohol and the law. Individuals with fetal alcohol have problems with the law for three reasons. First, is they have incomplete brains. The second, you and I with our complete brains have a social network. We have friends. Our friends tell us, no, David, you can't help people steal from the drugstore. Go home. Our friends look out for us and remind us of our civic responsibilities. Usually, we very quickly remember these responsibilities. We pause. We think again. And we get back in the car and go home. People with fetal alcohol often have behaviors that push people away and thus many do not have friends. Many do not have people to remind them what is socially appropriate and correct behavior in various circumstances. And their memory issues make it difficult to make good decisions. The third reason that individuals with fetal alcohol have problems with the law is that we, the complete brained, have a little voice in the back of our heads that says, David, this drugstore caper is bad news. Go home. If the Law Society finds out, your career is over. This little voice is a sophisticated cognitive function. It helps us fit in. It helps us follow the rules. People with FASD, in my experience, lack this little voice. Often people with FASD are social outcasts and deal with daily frustration and shame. Thus they make bad decision after bad decision, just as we would make bad decisions after we experience frustration and shame. The legal standard that people with FASD must meet is the same standard as everyone else. The judge always has to ask is one question. What were you thinking? And for people with fetal alcohol, the question goes deeper. We need to ask, what is going on in that brain? Because I wouldn't do that in those circumstances. That is, we must focus on brain function and less on behavior we don't like. Let's look at some law. If you read the Criminal Code of Canada, you see that the sentencing section, sections 718 and following, expects all Canadians to have complete brains. For example, 718B states, to deter the offender and others from committing offenses, which means that in the moment before you commit a crime, you and I will stop for a moment because we know there is a rule of law and we know there are consequences and we have remembered many situations where people have done a crime and gone to jail. Section 718B requires a brain that is able to use our common adaptive behaviors, learning abilities, attention strengths, reasoning abilities, and memory skills. The person with fetal alcohol struggles in all of these areas because their brain is missing parts. Here is another example. 718D states, to assist in rehabilitating offenders. Jail is the loss of liberty. We put you in jail and we hope that you will think about what you did. And then we hope you promise yourself that you won't do this again because you don't like jail. Strangely, people with fetal alcohol do well in jail. They like the structure, they have friends, they are fed, and in many ways they are happy there. And they are also horribly exploited by other prisoners. And when they get out of jail, they are the same person they were when they went in. That is, the permanent brain damage 
has not been repaired. They still have trouble reflecting and understanding consequences. Here's the good news. Dr. Sterling Claren, MD, the main beam of fetal alcohol research in the world, tells us to create an external brain. An external brain is a team, a committee of good-hearted people who will stand in for the missing brain cells. These are the people who help implement behaviors for the person with FASD so they can overcome their difficulties, such as making sure they report to their probation officer so they don't get into more problems with the law. Teachers, pastors, extended family, and retired neighbors are all examples of an external brain. Here's my favorite example. One of my clients had problems shopping. Almost every time he went shopping, he was arrested for assault, mischief, theft, or other crimes. He was prohibited from entering most of the large stores in Vancouver. As a term of his probation, the sentencing judge sent him to walk dogs at the pound. The nice retired people at the pound, who all drive Volvos, were happy to see him. He loved dogs, and the dogs loved to be walked. For the first time in his life, my client had ample, unconditional love and acceptance. The second thing he got was friends. And this retired fireman immediately saw that my client had problems shopping and often didn't go see his probation officer, which usually resulted in more failure to appear charges. This retired fireman with his Volvo said, I'll take you shopping. I'll make sure you see your probation officer. That is an external brain. And it's free. Why does fetal alcohol and the law matter to you? In the beginning, I said this was difficult. And there are no easy answers when people with a permanent brain-based physical disability break the law. We know jail has no effect. The law says jail should be the last step in the ladder of punishment. Fetal alcohol raises difficult questions. This topic is important because all Canadians share the value of fairness. Values, while not written in law, are a part of our character. Values tell us who we are. It's much more than we're all equal before the law. Fairness is individual. Fairness is personal. To be fair, in Canada, we take into consideration all of the facts of the person and their situation. The second reason fetal alcohol is important is legal and is found in our Constitution. Our Charter of Rights and Freedoms is the supreme law of Canada. This document requires us to accommodate people. This document is a leveling document. That means, for the most part, we are bringing some people, usually those who are less fortunate than us, up to a level where most of us live. Here's an example of accommodation required by the Constitution. After years of struggling, Parliament decided that Aboriginal people who went before a sentencing judge needed to be treated differently. The judge was to be given a report. It's called the Gladue Report. This report gives the judge specific information about the person and his Aboriginal context. The reason we do this is because we put too many Aboriginal people in jail. And jail is expensive and seems to have no effect on behavior. Perhaps we need to find a similar way to accommodate people who have a permanent brain-based physical disability. I'm suggesting we do a similar report to the judge for people with fetal alcohol. This multidisciplinary report would include input from doctors, neurologists, speech and language therapists, teachers, and probation officers and as its structure, 
might use the alarm mnemonic we talked about earlier. The third reason fetal alcohol is important is that unless we change how we deal with people with a permanent brain-based physical disability, we are going to discover we are spending too much money on our prison systems. In 2014, we are slowly drifting towards a style of punishment that is not Canadian. We need to follow our Charter of Rights and Freedoms and find ways to accommodate all Canadians. Canadians believe that we all do better when we all do better because that is what our Constitution requires. We do not need more prisons. We need more probation officers. And these new probation officers need to give the judge this multidisciplinary report. It is that simple. For further and better information, check out these three websites. And the best book on fetal alcohol is called Trying Differently, Not Harder by Diane Malbin. It's 80 pages long and costs 20 US dollars and is available at facets.org. F-A-S-C-E-T-S dot org. Thank you.